There may be times where you want to be able to delay time in between your tasks. That's also referred to as lag time. In other words, you don't want to start one task right after another. You want to give it minutes, hours, or days, or even weeks. Lead time is where you want to be able to start one task before its predecessor has finished. Let me give you a couple of examples. First of all, let's pretend that this task is pouring cement. Once you finish pouring the cement, do you want to jump right on top of it and start your framework to build your house? No, you want to wait for it to dry. So what you can do is you can give it some delay or lag time of a couple of days when it's finished drying, then have the uh, framers come in and start building on top of it. Now for your lead time, let's pretend this task is moving all the furniture out of a room. The next task would be to say vacuum the carpet. Do I have to wait until all the furnitures move before I start vacuuming? No. Once they have a clean spot, I can just begin vacuuming so I can give it some lead time or start a little bit earlier or overlap into its predecessor task. Let me show you what it looks like. Right now I want to be able to add some lag time in between these two tasks. What I do is I look at the successor task here and I come over here and double click on it really fast. To the predecessors tab, come over in the lag time field and type in your minutes, hours, days, or weeks. I'm going to do two and hit enter. By default, it's two days. Click OK. And notice a couple of things. First of all, in the entry table, the change I made, it shows everything that's highlighted has been affected by that change or that lag time. Then over in the Gantt chart, it doesn't extend the task. It just extends some time or delay or lag time. Of course, if you hover over it, it's not going to show it here for too long, but it shows you a little pop-up that says lag time. In fact, you can double click on it here and add your lag time as well. And it pushes everything else out because of the delay, so no longer does the project finish on October the 8th. In fact, if you hit undo, there's October the 8th, and I click redo, it's now October the 10th. Now here's another thought about lag time and even lead time. I'm going to go ahead and hit undo and then double click on the same task here and say for the lag time, instead of using hours, minutes, or weeks, I'm going to go ahead and type in 50%. I'm going to use a percentage and hit enter and then click OK. What the percentage means is that it's going to take the total time of the previous task, which is five days, is going to take 50% of that as its lag time or 30% or whatever percentage we type in there, okay? All right, I'm going to go ahead and hit undo. Now what about lead time? I'm looking down here of task 13. Once that's complete, we're out of the development phase and we're moving right into the edit phase, which the first task is going to be proofread. So let's say that I want to have some lead time. In other words, I want to start proofreading a little bit earlier. I don't want to have to wait for the images to be added. Because basically the content's been written, all I have to do is proofread the content, not necessarily the images, let's say. I have a little bit of lead time here, start a little bit earlier, not wait for the predecessor to finish or complete. So I go to the successor here and double click. Again, you're coming to the predecessor tab to the lag field. What makes it a lead field is typing in a negative number. So if I do negative one day and hit enter, click OK, it now pulls it back this way one day. And you can see everything's highlighted, what it affected my change here to a lead time of one day. So where the project used to finish on October the 8th, it's now finishing one day earlier. In fact, let's try to zoom in on this here. I'm going to select it, come up here on the standard toolbar and click on scroll to task. So it can be a little bit closer here. So I'm looking at the task here and that task here. So it's supposedly starting in a little bit earlier by one day. In fact, you can see it, it's cutting in or overlapping with that task above. It's not doing it right after, okay? You can see the arrows going right at the end instead of going right before it. So it does have lead time. I'm gonna go ahead and double click on this little line here. And I can make the change here. Instead of negative one day, how about if we do negative 30% and hit enter. What that means is that the successor would start after its predecessor has finished 70% of the task. So its predecessor has to go through 70% of two days. And remember, it's by hours there, so two days equals 16 hours. After it completes 70%, then it's going to have a lead time or start in 30%. So again, looking at here, it's starting a little bit earlier here. And I wouldn't basically go off that, but nonetheless, you get the point here that you can use percentages or you can go ahead and use your hours, minutes, days, weeks, or months. And finally, you can see that the change is so minute, even a little lead time is not going to change the uh, project time of October 8th. I'd have to have more lead time or have this task start at least a day early in order to bring my project date back a bit. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.